All right, melon lovers, this is Ross. In today's video, I am so excited because we finally have a sweet melon for you guys. I have been growing melons, if you're not familiar with some of the melon videos I've been putting out over the years, I've been growing them for like five years. It all started with a trip. I went to Japan, had a traditional kaiseki dinner. At the end of the dinner, they gave us a slice of melon and I could not believe how good it was. And I said, I have to come back to the United States, grow melons myself learn how to grow them and so i can replicate that amazing and incredible experience i had in japan and it's been five years and i've been failing every single year because they're just not sweet they're just not <clears throat> of the sweetness level they have some good fragrance and melon flavor to them but they've never been sweet enough even comparable to what you get at the grocery store in the united states so <clears throat> if you guys are struggling with getting sweet melons i'm going to talk about my journey in this video so that you guys can get sweet melons yourself um, and it's pretty simple i think the main <clears throat> the main lesson i learned about two seasons ago was to limit the number of melons on each plant to just one so thin them out and the reason why that works is because these plants produce sugars that go into the fruits through the carbohydrates that are produced through photosynthesis. So the leaves are the energy source. And if you have, let's say, uh, as an example, a peach tree that has thousands of peaches on it after they flower, which is pretty typical, a mature peach tree will have thousands of them, you can't get away with ripening thousands of peaches because if you left them all on there, they would all be rather small and not very sweet. So the way to combat that is people will come into their peach trees like myself and they'll thin out the peaches quite a bit. And every four to six inches will be a peach along the branches. It's the same thing with these melons. If you have too many melons on the vine, the leaves and the photosynthesis, the energy produced through that is not enough to be divvied up into multiple melons. But if you can put all that energy into one melon, it'll be sweet. And I pretty much guarantee that uh, unless your, your vine is very unhealthy. And so that's some of the other things that I had struggled with in the past and some of the other videos we did. Fusarium wilt is a real problem. And if you have that in your soil, it can be really difficult to grow melons. So um, there isn't really a great way around it. You can um, graft melons onto a squash rootstock. You can move them to a different spot the following year. You can even um, sterilize the soil. That's pretty extreme, but that's what commercial growers in Japan do. Um, and so generally, if anything's gonna be affecting these leaves and limiting the number of leaves, or even if you have them planted in less sunlight, you're gonna have less sweet or melons that are not not as sweet um, every year. And so it's really important to get that right and to focus on getting these melons to grow I think grow, get them to grow enough to have enough leaves on them so that when they do flower and they do fruit, you end up having enough carbohydrates that can be put into it. So one of the things I actually really recommend is when you start the melon seeds yourself, you could start them in three inch by three inch pots. And this is usually about a month, maybe even five, six weeks before you're gonna plant them. And then three weeks later, they're gonna be rooted and maybe even two weeks later, they're gonna be rooted in that three inch by three inch pot. So then you're gonna take that and you're gonna up pot it into a one gallon pot, six inches by six inches. And I'm telling you, they're gonna transplant a lot better when you put them in the ground. Um, that bigger root system that they have, they're gonna grow like you won't believe. And that was a lesson I learned last year in a, a plot that we had uh, that I had access to where I grew about 30 some melon plants of different varieties. We trialed so many varieties, by the way, over the years with the help of Amy Goldman's book, The Melon. But in that plot, we had irrigation set up and we also had uh, melons that were transplanted from one gallon size pots. And they were well over my head, probably 10 foot long vines and they were producing melons like you wouldn't believe. And I thought to myself, these melons are doing so well, there's more sunlight in that plot than I've ever had. So there should be more sugar content, but I did not thin them out the way that I had learned a year prior. So 
we got a little greedy last year. I could have had a lot of success to share with you guys. I didn't take, unfortunately, the greatest notes of the varieties that I liked, but uh, there was four varieties here that were growing this year that I think would produce a sweeter melon a bit more reliably. And that's the other part of this puzzle, choosing the right variety. Now, first and foremost, this is a melon called Grisolette. This is from Johnny's Seeds. What they did was they hybridized this melon, uh, the Petite Grise de Vernay, and hybridized that to create it uh, so that it has the same sweetness and flavor with better disease resistance. And so far, I think, and also better vigor, I think that's relatively true. I don't know how much better the Petite Grise might taste, but this is incredible. This is very sweet, very fragrant, complex, an amazing melon. So. The Petite Grease may not even really be worth growing. I've still got it here in one of these vines. I think it's this one is producing some Petite Grease melons. I also, by the way, decided to grow again the Collective Farm Woman melon. Now that's a different species of melon than these others. These others are cantaloupe. 